And here we're going to talk a little bit more about chemical reactions. And here the topic now will be the types of reactions. And notice here I made a list. There are five different kinds of reactions, at least the ones that we're going to talk about here. So the first one, uh, we have what we call combination reactions. Secondly, we have decomposition reactions, which is really the opposite of combination reactions. And then we have displacement reactions, where one element displaces another element. And that falls into three categories. So maybe we'll call this 3A, 3B, and 3C. We have displacement reactions that just talk about displacing hydrogen. We have displacement reactions that displace metals. And we have displacement reactions that displace the halogens. And then we also have what we call metathesis reactions. And those are basically the double displacement reactions where two elements are being displaced at the same time. And finally, we have neutralization reactions which typically deal with mixing bases and acids and they neutralize one another. And we'll see what those are like. So starting out with the easy one, it's called the combination reaction. And typically we have two elements, A and B. You put them together, there is a reaction, and they yield something where A and B are not combined. As an example, let's say we have hydrogen gas, and this little parenthesis with the G there that indicates that this is a gas. Here we have an L that indicates that's a liquid. We can also put an S there that indicates it's a solid, or an AQ, which means it's an aqueous solution, means it's dissolved or placed into water. So here we have hydrogen gas and oxygen gas that yields water. Now, first of all, this is probably not uh, balanced, so let's see what we have. On the left side of the equation, we have, let me place it over here. So we have the left and we have the right. And notice on the left side of the equation, we have hydrogen and we have oxygen. And on the right side of the equation, we have hydrogen and we have oxygen. Uh, right now, we have two moles or two atoms, depending upon how you want to look at it. We have two moles of hydrogen and we have two moles of oxygen. On the right side, we have two moles of hydrogen and only one mole of oxygen. So you can see that this is not balanced. To have that balance, we need to have just as many oxygens on the right as we do on the left. So the first thing I'm going to do is take a look at the oxygens. Notice that I need twice as many in order to have these balanced. So that means I'm going to need to place a two in front there. So when I place a two in front there, what happens here? Well, instead of now two hydrogens, I now have four hydrogens. And instead of one oxygen, I now have two oxygens. So the oxygens are balanced, but the hydrogens are no longer balanced. I don't have enough hydrogens on the left side of the equation. So I have, now I look at the hydrogens here. Notice I have four hydrogens here. I have two hydrogens here. So if I double these, make that into two times two or four, now the hydrogens are balanced. So I can change this. And that now changes to a four. We have a hydrogen balance. We have oxygen balance. Now we have ourselves a balanced equation. So two moles of hydrogen gas plus one mole of oxygen gas forms two moles of liquid water. So why is this a combination reaction? Well, before the reaction started, we have two reactants, one that's hydrogen, one that's oxygen, and they were completely separate as gases. We combine them. When they're combined, they react and they form water molecules. And so this is what we call a combination reaction.